Okay, so welcome back to Sparklebot. You know, I was talking on the last episode about Kim Jong Il's brother, um, Kim Jong Un, Kim Jong Soon. I don't, I yeah, I don't know. It's the these. I don't want to get back into the whole Korean thing, but it's 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 a baffling mystery to me, especially K-pop. That's a whole world I don't want to get into. Anyways, um, so apparently what happened with that assassination was that the woman she was caught. She ran up to him when he was in an airport and shoved like a like a like a hand handkerchief in his face, and the handkerchief was covered in cyanide or something. I don't know. You'd have to look it up on uh, IMDb.com, and um, and that killed him. And then they found the woman, and then the woman said she didn't know that she thought that what she was doing was part of a like a reality show prank, like what they do on YouTube when they run up to people and like trip them and pour sand in, the, in their potato salad. Uh, she thought it was just a prank, and um, she found out that the man that she killed was actually the the brother of the Grand Emperor of Korea. And then she was like, "Oh, dang! I feel really bad about that. Can I, um, you know, my condolences?" She went up on uh, national television NPR and said, uh, "My condolences. You know, I I really didn't mean to. I didn't know it was going to be such a huge issue." The man over there was holding a video camera and filming me, and he said, you know what, it's going to be fine. It's going to be okay. Just go up and do it. It'll be funny. I promise you. And then he gave me a gumball, and I'm like, ooh, a gumball. And it was a yellow one, so you know how much I like the yellow ones because that's what color my skin is since I'm Korean. Anyways, that's what happened, and that's kind of um, fucked up in a way. But you know what, that, that that's what happens. Anyways, let's talk about something else something else that's fucked up and i'm gonna i'm gonna start sharing my politics on this show so if you're not okay with that then listen to a different show if you're okay with that but you don't agree with me don't leave comments saying that you don't agree with my politics because i don't care and i will talk about you on the show and make fun of you and i'll link to your uh, deviantart page and people will see all your stupid sonic recolors and the fact that you fucking trace dragon ball z artwork like really listen I know what Akira Toriyama's art style looks like. You're not fooling me. I'm not... I, I'm not stupid. I know exactly what you're doing, you know? So just stop it, please. Anyways, um... I'm gonna talk about the immigrant protest that happened a couple of days ago. Uh, as, as of the time that this episode goes up, it will be probably three or four days ago. I don't know. I really don't. That depends if I even put this episode up. Which I cross my fingers, hope I do. But you know what? I'm gonna let you in on a little secret. I played, um... I, I tried recording this particular game, Crash Bandicoot, at least two times before now, so this is my third attempt at playing it, and um, we're going to see how this goes. This, the first one I was going to try to do, I was going to try to start doing um, face cam, and then I realized that that's totally gay, so I didn't do it. Um, so anyways, going on about the uh, immigrant protest, what they did, what they wound up doing was they wound up um, uh, not showing up for work that particular day, and... Um, that was the whole protest. The protest. I don't know exactly what the protest was, like what they were hoping to accomplish by doing this, but what it wound up being was just a bunch of people took a day off, even though they weren't supposed to. And some business has some businesses had to close. I know McDonald's uh, closed down. Um, uh, not all McDonald's, just some McDonald's. Um, some some stores. I guess a lot of these locations rely a lot on immigrant uh, labor to operate efficiently. So what happened was um, some of these immigrants came back the next day and um, their bosses said, hey, you know what, you know what, pal, you're fired. Uh, don't bother coming in tomorrow. You're fired. We, uh, we really don't appreciate... Pe we, we like people who are te team players and you are definitely not a team player. So please, please, please just don't... Um, spread your message here of, uh, you know what, these people aren't paying us enough, or whatever the case may be. Listen, if you are an undocumented citizen, that means you are not entitled to the same worker benefits and standards that other employee employees are apparently entitled to. Now, whether or not I, I agree with that, I'm not going to get into specifics there, but uh, that is, that's just like, legally true. If you're not in, if you're not in the the country legally, you are not entitled to the same standards, because those things are a lot of those things are um, like rights for U.S. citizens. And if you do not legally reside here, you are just here under false pretenses or whatever, then you don't get those. So people get fired for doing stuff like walking out of work for a day, and then they're like, 
how could this possibly happen? My employer is a racist. He fired me because I'm a dark-skinned mestizo from down south. And uh, they're like, no, I fired you because you didn't show up for a day. And uh, then you're like, you know what? I didn't show up for that day because it was a protest day. I'm like, you know what? Business doesn't take a protest day. No businesses anywhere take a protest day. So what wound up happening was like, I think there were at least 21 reports of immigrants getting fired because they skipped out on one day of work, even though they were scheduled to work. So let that be a cautionary tale. I don't, I don't condone um, doing things like leaving work just because you want to make a like a poignant response to your employer or your country or whatever, because. If, if you really think that your job is so unimportant that you can take a day off and it won't matter, then that's your own prerogative. You know what? I guess that's fine. I'm not going to judge you for taking a job. Taking whatever job you feel like you're most qualified to take. And I'm not making any sort of comments with that statement. I'm just letting it all flow out of my big stupid mouth. You know what? That's just the way that I feel. Anyways, we're moving on. Um... There's a there's apparently a woman's protest. It's going to be the exact same thing, except women are going to leave work for a day. And I'm guessing, I'm going to guess that this will probably happen. I'm going to guess that a bunch of men will be like, okay, well, we need to show solidarity for our women, so we'll skip out on the protest day too. And then what they do instead is they get drunk the night before us because they know that they're not going to go into work the next day. So they're hung over all day, and then it's like, you know what, that was nice. I had a fun night last night, and I'm... Disappointed that I'm hungover today, too. But you know what? It was worth it because uh, I got to stay home and watch uh, um, The Norm of the North all day long. And it was a good movie. And I put it on repeat and I watched it like 17 times. So please just know that, you know, I like Rob Schneider. He's going, going off of that, I actually did watch Norm of the North today. Um, I guess this is why that I brought this up. So let's talk about that for a little bit, too. Uh, by the way, uh, on Women's Day, don't uh, skip out on work for a protest. You might get fired. That that might happen because it did happen for the immigrants. Anyways, Norma the North, we're talking about that. It's a Rob Schneider film. I've heard reviews of it that say Rob Schneider was somehow the least lazy part of Norma the North. I completely agree with that because I was um, watching it. And the original, the, the, the plot was that a real estate company is going to build houses in the Arctic or something, some stupid, not like drivel like that. I'm like, what? Okay, whatever. Um, and then they're like, no, we have to stop them. And like, okay, this is, this is such a non-issue. This is like a, this is, a, it's one of those issues that's too realistic to be like part of a fantasy cartoon movie, but it is part of a fantasy cartoon movie. So it's really strange to me that like, they still use real world jokes and references but there's talking polar bears that, like, okay, so Norma the North is a magical polar bear who can talk to humans. Okay, whatever. I can let that slide. They, they literally say Norma the North and his uh, uncle uh, Jerry are the only bears that can talk to humans. I'm like, okay, so this is just a bunch of coincidences lead to the resolution of the, the, the movie where they get the realtor to, to, to stop building in the Arctic. I'm like, okay, so... I don't want to judge, but that's a dumb premise. Anyways, you know, I thought I'd have more to say about Norm of the North, but I really didn't. Um, it was just one of those movies that's like, well, okay, uh, I can, I, I kind of get it, but I didn't really enjoy it, so please, you know, please just, oh, it's like Rob Schneider saying, please watch my movie. I want to get into uh, animated character movies with a funny talking animal genre. That's the genre that for me, you know? It's it's what I've always kind of hoped I could do. I I, I, I was sick of um, I was sick of people always like saying, "Oh, Rob Schneider, you oh, I mean the guy who was in the the Hot Chick or um, whatever the fuck else he was in, fucking Adam Sandler's Waterboy, where he's like, you can do it, and then he's like, you know what? I came up with that joke. I'm like Adam Sandler. He's sitting there in the dark in his dark office. And he's got his hand, heads in his hand. He's got a, a half-empty bottle of whiskey right in front of him. He's just shaking his head. He's like, Rob, I don't know what I'm going to do. I don't know how I'm going to... Um, I don't know how I'm going to finish this movie. And I'm like, you know what? Rob's like, you know what, um, Adam Sandler? I'll tell you what you're going to do. You're going to have my character, my funny character, who looks like a, like a handyman, jack-of-all-trades. Um, he's going to come out and the water boy is going to be in his window saying, you know what? I just don't think I can be a water boy today. And then the, uh, my character is going to come out and say, he's going to say, whoa, 
That's what he's going to say. He's going to say, um, uh, don't listen to the haters, Adam Sandler. Water boys are important. You know what? I wasn't sure if that was going to explode. Um, he's going to say, water boys are important. You know what? The, the, the team players, the NFL, the college, I don't remember exactly what the plot of that movie was because I didn't watch all of it. It was just one of those Adam Sandler films. You know, you know the ones, the ones that are okay, but don't really speak to you on a real level. It's like when I watched the fucking, um, forgetting Sarah Marshall. It's like, okay, that movie was fine. That movie was not offensive. I was not offended by that film. But here's the thing about it. It, uh, it didn't really jump out as me as being a funny or good movie. And you know what? I like Russell Brand. He's a good guy. He's got big muscles. He's got big shirt. He's got a micro penis. Apparently, that's what I've heard on uh, TV. I heard they were talking about that on TV about Russell Brand's micro penis, and I'm like, you know, that's just really offensive. He, d what, what does he do to deserve you people talking about his micro penis? Just because he's got like a little acorn penis at the, the bottom of his torso, doesn't mean that he deserves this sort of hatred. You know, he, he he's a well accomplished man. He's a, I think he's a political activist. I'm not quite so sure about that. But, you're talking about his micro-penis like it's, uh, like it's um, really a topic worth talking about, you know. He's, he's probably embarrassed about it. He's going to hide his face in his long hair. He's going to go into his Camry and drive home into his big-ass mansion with a gated community. And he's going to cry to... I don't think he's married. Maybe he is. I think he might have been married to um, Katy Perry. Oh, also, here's a fun fact for you. Chad Kroger from Nickelback is married to Avril Lavigne. Or they, they were, but maybe they're not now. I don't know exactly. But those are two gross things that I don't like that are together. So I hope that they can find happiness in my disgust. Anyways, thank you for watching SparkleDot. I hope you had a good time today. We're going to be continuing this again soon. So I'm going to give you a little kiss right now. Goodbye.